Hello, I'm Reggie York. This is a presentation on some basic concepts about statistics. It's designed for the human service professional, not for the math student, but we're going to be dealing with very specific things uh, that are very basic, not very complicated. At the end of this presentation, you will be able to, number one, explain the main role of statistics in data analysis. Number two, identify several ways to use statistics to help us understand the data that we have. Number three, explain the concepts of variance and statistical significance. And number four, identify what influences statistical significance. Under what conditions are you more likely to find your data are statistically significant? Let's talk first about the role of statistics. It deals with the theme of ruling out chance as the explanation for the data that we have collected to answer our research questions. Sometimes as we collect data, things tend to slide one way or another just by chance. So if we stop at a certain point, we may not have anything very meaningful. We may only have chance. So we could say that some things happen just by chance. Okay, let's look at this particular situation. Suppose you wanted to know if your particular sample of persons was more likely to be affiliated with the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. You decide to start interviewing people to find out. What if the first person you interviewed was a Democrat, the second one a Republican, the third one a Democrat, the fourth one a Republican, and the fifth one a Democrat? You have three Democrats and two Republicans. Do you have significantly more Democrats than Republicans? Does it make sense now for you to conclude that three-fifths of all persons in the population you are sampling are Democratic or, or affiliated with the Democratic Party and uh, the others are with the Republican Party? Would that make sense? I think you would agree with me that that makes no sense. As you go back there, first of all, have very small sample size, right? And you were interviewing, you had a Democrat, then a Republican, then a Democrat, then a Republican, then a Democrat, and you stopped. Well, if you uh, interviewed another person, then, you know, the way the pattern was going there, it looks like that would have been another Republican, at which time you'd had 50% one and 50% of the other. So that sort of says that at that particular point, you probably have chance rather than uh, something that is meaningful in terms of the question you're posing. Let's look at the question of how we use statistics. We use it to describe, for example, how many of our families have preschool age children and uh, families we are serving in our agency. You might want to know what is the mean age of the students at the school or in the class or whatever. That's describing. We also examine relationships because we sometimes want to explain by looking at the relationship between variables to see if one might make the case that one of the variables explains the others. The other, for example, do males receive higher salaries than females? In other words, does gender explain salary? Is it one of the things that explains what kind of a salary a person has because they are male or female? That's one potential question. Uh, secondly, are clients functioning better at the end of service than the beginning? Uh, which would deal with the question of whether one could make a case that service is effective. Another thing we do with statistics is test the hypothesis. If you hypothesize that males will receive higher salaries than females, and you then submit this to statistical analysis, you will say either that the, the hypothesis is supported or not based on whether males have higher salaries and whether that difference is statistically significant. A major question in this regard is very, very basic, but it's what is a variable? A variable is something that varies. A constant is something that does not. If all the people in your sample are female, do you have the variable of gender in your data? Everyone's a female. Can you say you're measuring gender? So you could do a, an examination of an hypothesis that includes gender as a variable. 
No, because gender does not vary. How about this one? If you have not collected data on age, do you have age as a variable? Of course not. These two things are very simple and basic, but you might be surprised as you go through the process of learning about research as a human service professional or a student that it's very easy to make that kind of mistake. A category of a variable is not the same thing as a variable. For example, suppose you have collected data on males and females on salary and wish to know if males have higher salaries. How many variables are in your analysis? You're collecting data on males and females in regard to salary. How many variables? Well, if you said three, it'd be wrong. Uh, you have two variables, gender and salary. Gender is measured in two categories. You are either male or female. So don't get confused about category of a variable versus the variable. What is statistical significance? The p-value is the fractional equivalent to the number of times in 100 that our data would occur by chance. If p equals 0.23, we can say that our data would occur by chance 23 times in 100. If p-value is 0.57, we can say 57 times in 100, and so forth. P-values, um, the value of p is designated by the small letter p, not the capital. We're talking here about probability of chance being the explanation. It can range from a low of, wi of 0, which means your data cannot be explained by chance at all, to a high of 1.0, which means it is only chance that you have discovered. When you test the hypothesis, you, you use statistics to determine if your, your hypothesis is supported by the data. Uh, the data do not support the hypothesis if chance is the reasonable explanation. The data does not also does not support the hypothesis if the data that you find does not go in the direction that was hypothesized. For example, if you hypothesize that males receive higher salaries and you find out that females your data, your data shows that females have the higher salary, obviously your, da your hypothesis is not supported. If it does go in the right direction, then you have to ask the question, is it statistically significant? In other words, is it, can, have we adequately addressed chance as the explanation of the data that we have? The normal distribution, the normal standard in the social sciences, excuse me, is 5 times in 100, designated very often as p less than 0.05, but this is an arbitrary standard. So if you're publishing something and you have an hypothesis, you would normally be expected to use the p less than 0.05, meaning if your, if your p-value for your data fails to be 0.05 or, or lower, you would have to say your data did not support the hypothesis. What about these p-values? What if you have a p-value of 0.54? What's that mean? Okay, the, the 54 times in 100 is what it means. What about 0 0.05? 5 times in 100. Is a p-value of 0 0.50 better than one of 0 0.05? Meaning, by better, uh, meaning um, I'm saying, are you more likely does it does it do a better job of addressing chance? And the answer is uh, no. 0 0.05 is better because lower scores in p-values are better, much like in the game of golf. Would any of the above meet the normal standard in the social sciences? 0 0.05, 0 0.50, 0 0.54. Well, the answer is 0 0.05, as I just mentioned. The normal standard is 0.05. If, it, if your, if your p-value is 0.05 or less, then you have statistical significance according to the normal standard in social sciences. I would not argue with anybody who wanted us to do a different standard uh, for it, but uh, this is the normal standard. What influences statistical significance? Let's look at this question a little bit here. The sample size influences it which means how many people we have in our data. In this case, bigger is better. The larger your sample, the more likely you are to achieve statistical significance. The variance in the data. How similar or different are the people on a given variable? In this case, smaller is better. 
if people are uh, less variant in your sample, you're more likely to have statistical, statistical, statistical significance. <laughs> Number three, the magnitude of the results, in which case bigger is better. We're talking about things like the strength of the relationship um, or the amount of difference between the groups. If, if there's a big difference between the two groups in your data, that's a stronger relationship or a relationship of greater magnitude. Therefore, it is more likely to have to receive statistical, achieve statistical significance. Sample size, are you more likely to achieve statistical significance if you have a larger sample? Yes. Which is better? Two studies have treatment groups with a success rate of 60% compared to a success rate of 30% for the comparison group, but study A has a sample of 10 and study B has a sample of 20. Magnitude is the same, 60% versus 30%. But sample size is bigger for one than the other. So study B is more likely to have statistical significance. How about this one? Two studies show a correlation between grades and self-esteem of 0.35, but study A has a sample size of 30, sample B has a sample size of 40. Again, sample B is better, it's got a bigger sample. One of the issues, of course, is whether the data is homogeneous or how much variance there is. Here's a question. Are you more likely to achieve statistical significance if the people are more homogeneous on the designated variable? If the people are more, more like each other, uh, if the ages of men are closer together than the ages of women, you know, that would be lower variance. The standard deviation is a measure of homogeneity. The higher the value of the standard deviation, the lower is the, hom the, is the hom hom <laughs> homogeneity. So higher values are not good. Variance, the vehicle in statistics for determining uh, homogeneity is variance. The greater the variance for the variables in your study, the less likely you will find statistical significance. The bell curve shows the normal distribution of people on human conditions. If it is fatter in the middle than the two ends of the continuum, because most people are generally around the middle and the extremes have few people. I have a different presentation on the bell curve. I'm not going to go into detail about it here. Just I want to uh, tell you about it. Uh, let me ask this one. Which is better? In study A, the standard deviation for age is 1.2. And study B, the standard deviation of age is 2.8. Which one is more likely to achieve statistical significance? Uh, well, uh, study A, because the de standard deviation is lower, there is less variance, more homogeneity. The magnitude of the difference is an influence. Uh, if study A, uh, in study A, the treatment group had a 60% success rate, and the comparison group had a 30% success rate, in study B, the treatment group had a 70% success rate, and comparison group 30%. The sample is the same for the two studies. The variance is the same. Which is more likely to achieve statistical significance? Well, the one with a greater magnitude of difference is the one. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you in understanding some just very basic concepts uh, in statistics. There's a lot more, more to learn, of course, but this is the first step.